God. And God was with him. And God is still doing the same thing for people. Right? Take time out. Take time to listen to God. Because even though you are in a place where the word of God might be spoken and people are worshiping, you might not even end up worshiping. Sometimes things happen that could, you could even be going here right now and say you're going to you feeling good and something happened that turned you off altogether. And sometimes you have to say, this is the devil's work. You know, let me get out of this. As David said, why do cast down on my soul down? But then he lifted himself up, the Spirit of God lifted him up, that he could praise him. Right? And so, take time to listen to God. Take time to listen to God. He's speaking, but you must take time to listen to him. Right? And so, meditate on his word. The scripture says, Psalm 1. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That's verse 1. Right? But verse 2 said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And what kind of fruit does it bring? It said, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So sometimes you can't understand why that, that tree is not, there are trees, no matter how hot it is, you never see their leaves quilt. Their leaves might get dusty because of the dust around, but they're still bright as ever up, they bear their fruit, and you wonder why. But their roots are way down into the ground, and they're drawing from a fountain that never shall run dry. Okay? So, the scripture said that these are things that elevate us, these are things that lift us up. Okay? To walk, to walk in the cause of the ungodly, because the ungodly are going to teach you wrong things. Right? Now listen to what they say. But delight yourself in the law of the Lord and meditate upon what God wants you to do. In his law as he meditate day and night. Then you're going to see the fruit come forth. Right? So today people are suffering. They're going to church. There are many Christians now today. And there may be a lot of people, Christian people call themselves Christians. But they're suffering under the hand of the adversary. Okay? But if you worship, right? When the Bible said, when Job was cast down by the devil, he said he bowed his head and worshipped. He said, Naked I came into the world, naked I shall return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And ask yourself right now, if you are in Job's position, what would you do? Right? What would you do? We talk a lot about Job, right? And his patience. But what would you do? If you were the richest of men in, around the world and people knew yes, and then all of a sudden you went down to nothing just like that. Right? And all your children are dead. Okay? All your children are dead and they died in, in a, a, a tragic, under tragic circumstances. Okay? What would you do? But the Bible said in all of that, he bowed his head and worshipped. And, and when he did that, Satan was saying, but no, no, this can't be right. Worship still? I took everything I could from him, and he still worshipped, and he made a connection with heaven. He wasn't just worshipping for, so because he was in a place, right? Because he had a relationship with God, and nothing was going to break it. How do you feel about a relationship with God today? Do we have that kind of confidence and that kind of zeal and desire that we want to be connected with him and nothing is going to break, right? Even down to your last breath, when you breathe it, you're going to be saying the name of Jesus and you're going to be calling out on his name because you want to be connected with him. But you don't have to wait until when your last breath or when you're about to die or when the um, baby doctor tell you um, you have two months to live. Which those things, if you have faith in God, you don't even have to listen to those things either. Because the doctor is just another man. I must tell you that you're going to live two months. For what? Eh? For what? So I told my doctor, I said, when I came here, you were acting as if 
I was going to die any moment. I mean, like, I, I, I'm a candidate for death. Right? I said, look at me, six years later. Not because of your drugs. Okay? Not because of your drugs. You tell me to go and do something, test, whatever. I said, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And he asked me, I said, no, I'm not guinea pig. Don't play with my life. And he said to me one day, he said to me, don't tell me that the old lady told me that God will take care of me. I said, Jesus will take care of me. Yeah, that's what he said. I said, yeah, I tell you about the same thing the old lady told me, that Jesus will take care of me. Right? Because he has been doing it and he still continues to do it. You know? I'm telling you. So don't listen to those things either. They didn't bring you into this world, they can't take you out. Right? I consider myself, I, I, I have a, a, a little problem here that comes and goes. I'm, I've had it for 30 odd years. And, and um, I know if I go to the doctor, they will say, X, Y, Z, and whatever, they get excited. It doesn't matter. Right? I'm here 30 odd years later. I'm fine. Okay? I'm fine. Because my God keepeth me, right? The Lord keeps me, right? He's able to save and to deliver, right? He brought me in this world and I can't get out here without He telling me it's time to get out, okay? But anyway, as I said to you, brethren, I said to you, friends, take time to listen to God. God is talking to you. Don't be crowded out with all manner of stuff. And don't think that because you are in a place where worship is going on, it means that you're worshiping, okay? Because you know you sometimes you're lying to yourself. There are times when I've been somewhere where I won't worship. And I wasn't even playing the music too. And when I realized it myself, I said, oh, hmm. I didn't even realize what this song was saying, you know. All of a sudden I start, it started to appeal to me. And then it becomes meaningful to me. But I could have played that song maybe five, six times already. Right? The chorus or whatever it is, I could have played it. Right? And when you get a connection with heaven, what a great change it is and how different you feel, right? You feel in your body and your spirit and your soul because all of these things must answer to heaven, okay? Not just the body, but the spirit, the soul, the mind. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, with all thy might, right? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the heart, all of these things must connect. If all of them not connecting, then you're not worshiping. You're not getting the maximum connection. You know? Like sometimes when you have a, a thing you plug it in and the wire don't connect properly, it's it, it kind of shaky. And maybe the light blink or the thing go on and off. Right? Because you're not getting the right power. You know, this way you plug something into the wall, they make it a way that it's very solid. That way you push it in, it must, it must fast be fastened. Because if it's shaking, you're not going to get a, 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 a proper result, a good result. You might even burn up the, the appliance you're using because you're not getting the right, right, um, um, you not have the right connection. So, may God help us today that we make time to listen to God. Take time to listen to God. He's talking to you and you need to listen. We need to listen. We need to listen over and over again, right? And he, when he speaks to us, we'll get great results. Amen? And at this time, I want to sing a song, and this song is going to be maybe known, but it says, let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him, right? Which we have sung many times. But the part about to concentrate on him and worship him, is the thing that we fall short, right? And I know I'm no different. I may be, I may be, but to get a hundred percent and to maximize our time with God, we are doing it because we are caught up with other things that have nothing to do with worship. Sometimes physically, could be the cell phone which is the biggest problem nowadays, but it could also be just things in our mind, things that we brought with us to, and we say we're worshiping. Let's get rid of them, let's concentrate on Him, and worship Him.